everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, and today we are rebooting the Big Art Quest fairy tale with Elfish. So this is a jellyfish uh, mermaid, kind of wonderful creation. And basically, if you've never heard of this particular program that I do on the channel, um, this is a more involved fantasy painting, but I break it down into segments so that beginners can do it, which is kind of exciting. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. To help me make sure that you're able to create this for yourself at home, my husband catches questions, tracks me with all kinds of zooming in and zooming out cameras, and makes sure that you're up in the brush for all the action. Now, I'm going to explain this step by step. If you check the description below, there's a link to my website. On the website is the original photo reference that I created her from, so you can catch that lighting. It is a printable, printoutable of the painting so that you can use that for reference. There's also a grid and there's also a traceable. We're gonna grid the image in, but you're welcome to use the traceable. I don't mind at all and no, it's not cheating. I'm so excited, isn't she pretty? Oh yeah. I really, really love her. I just love her. I wanna, I wanna go side camera. Okay. Okay, so one of the things I really, really love about this is the lighting effect right here along her body. This is like really true to like, if you're doing a pool painting, or you're doing a dog swimming underwater painting, or whatever that you've got going on, being able to catch this is just really important. And I also really, really, oh, I'm gonna stun. you're going to stun hands me? I really like the idea of blending a jellyfish bell into uh, a mermaid concept. So that was a lot of fun. I expect her to be two to three segments, probably three segments long. We're going to go just a little bit today to get you warm back up into the process. So today I'm going to show you how to get the background in. We're going to grid her in and if we have time we'll start laying in the water and that should not be too bad. I'm pretty excited. I'm going to definitely be using my gridding material. See I've got my reference here. I'm doing the grid for an 11 by 14 on a one inch square. So that's my surface. Um, you can use the art tutor grid if you don't, um, if you're doing a different size uh, canvas than I am and use that tool to resize it. But this is what I'm going to be doing. So let's put our reference to the side because John will have picture in picture for you. Did I give you the picture? Hmm. You are, you, maybe you did, but you know what? I don't think I did. I'll work it out. Don't worry. You keep going. We'll okay. I'm going to keep going. John's going to get picture in picture. So usually on our lessons, what we have is a picture in the camera frame. So if you don't have the ability to print it out, you can do that. This is just an 11 by 14 artboard. It's not expensive. They're not pricey. Um, the only reason I have this as a preference is I paint a lot and I have storage issues. And so these are really helpful to me. Now I am going to be working the acrylic acrylic line by Sunlier. This will work with Holbein. This will work with Golden. This will work with any other line of acrylic paint. Um, I've been testing it. I really like it. I'm going to be working today the colors of titanium white, phthalo blue, phthalo green, and maybe a little dioxin purple. There are more colors listed in the description, and that's because we'll be using each of those colors during the lesson, but not necessarily today's lesson will have all of those. So let's put out our basic mixes and start blocking in and getting our gradation for our ocean. And we're going to talk a lot squeezing out the paint is so nice. I always like to zoom in on that paint squeezings when we get the chance. But I think John is finding us a missing, a missing, a. Uh, I can uh, multitask. I can find things. John can multitask. He's like so insulting. He's like, hey, hey, I can multitask. We can it's do just things. just fun to get in there. Isn't that really nice too? So I am not good about cleaning my caps and that gives me a lot of cap grief. So don't be like me. Clean your caps and you will have a happier time with your tubes of paint. You can kind of see where I just am not good at after each painting session cleaning my caps. Um, I do clean my paint brushes after each painting session. So I'm good there. I'm also going to put out some doxazine purple. Um, this is a color I use in like a lot of my lessons. So it looks black, but you can kind of see it on the squidgy out that it's purple. Interesting color. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these two together. I'm going to mix the phthalo blue and the phthalo green. Together, I'm going to use a Scotty knife. This is an artist knife for mixing. And I'm going to just take equal parts of my blue and green and mix them on my palette here. There we go. And the reason you use an artist knife is it doesn't waste any paint and it gives you a very even mix of paint. 
Now, one thing that I can do is I can actually get on my brush. I'm going to use a number 30 to start out. You're going to want a wide brush. It's somewhat firm and I prefer synthetic. And I'll go ahead and make sure that I've got all of this loaded up right there because I don't yeah, want to lose cool. any paint, right? I want all, all, all my paint. And I'm going to load up with a little bit of my dark color. I'm going to come at the bottom. And we're going to just start going up with just this wonderful color. Now, I do have the picture in picture whatever you're ready for it. Oh, anytime. So I'm not exactly sure where. There you we'll go. Perfect. It. Is that okay there? All right. You're perfect, perfect, perfect. We'll work that out as we go. So I'm coming up about a third of the way with this for right now. As I move up, I'm going to make sure this stays wet. I'm going to dip my brush in some water. And I'm going to go ahead and add some white to that mix as I'm coming up. And you can see that's starting to lighten it. And what I'm going to be doing is creating the effect of light flowing down through water and the transition of value, that's how light or dark something is, as it goes down. So that's what we're doing. I'm brushing back and forth on the wide. And when I want to come down and blend while this is still wet, I just bring the brush down and you can see it easily blends into the color below it. Now I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. I'm going to come here again and I'm going to add a little bit more white to my paint as I'm coming up. And I'm going to add some lighter value as I'm going up. And the reason that I'm doing that is because there's this drop off point of light. So up here, um, outside of the dark reflections, you're going to have a very light value. And it's easier to get that gradation in at first and then come in and put some darker values in as you're going. Oh, move the whole canvas. That's how much of a, <laughs> a blend I had going. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush a little bit. And I'm going to dry it off. And then I'm going to add a little purple into my dark little phthalo blue color and my phthalo green to so the turquoise just to make sure that down here, see how we're making it just a little bit darker? Yeah. Jackie had a really good question. Hi, Jackie. How you doing? She wanted to know, um, did you pre-wet the canvas? I did not pre-wet the canvas, but you can. The issue with these artboards when you pre-wet them, and I was doing it because it makes my job easier, is that if you at home use too much water, they warp, and it's very hard for you guys to fix that. Ah. So I'm just making sure this is coming up. And you can see I'm doing a light brush stroke back and forth. The so, surface is still wet. Can I ask something then? Yeah. So if, the, back and forth. if at home yeah. we're not getting the paint to go on as smoothly as you do, like, because yours just is sort of falling off the brush. Yes. If we're struggling, is that is that because of the amount of water? Is, there are what is, many, many factors. Here, I will... There are many, many factors on, uh, oh, you can see that for the picture in picture. There are many, many factors on why your um, uh, paint may not be coming off. The load of your brush, the amount of water in your brush, the type of the paint and the surface that you're painting on. If you go onto our website and you search Technique Tuesday, you will see a bunch of videos. One of them is going to be brush water paint. Watch that whole thing because we really get deep, 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 deep about what happens for new artists in that area. Because you could have different challenges than somebody who lives in a different region and a different climate. You could have different challenges than somebody who's painting with a different brush or a different paint or even hard water. There are many factors that impact how the brush uh, puts paint on your surface. That's a really fantastic video for that and I highly recommend it. On our website, search on our videos, Technique Tuesday. And actually really just watch all of them because it's a back to basics, like refresher course for beginners about acrylic. Like, hmm. like if you just need that, like, oh, what is all this stuff? That's what it's for. Cool. <sighs> Deep in breathe. We're back to the BAQ. I'm this so BAQ, excited. Yeah, the BAQ is pretty cool. It's, and oh, they were, the, the palette looks super shiny. Oh, is it plastic? This, the palette, that's what she was asking about. Okay. So this palette is a glass tempered palette by New Wave. Um, they make my peel palettes too, and I've been testing this. I do like it. It's kind of an issue because my sink, I have one sink, 
and I don't like cleaning the paint where our food is. So the what ha basically happens is you paint, the paint dries on it, and then you immediately wash it after and all the paint peels off. But that's kind of bothersome going down the sink. So I'm kind of working it out in my situation because I don't have a good reclamation thing set up. Which we're working on for the next Now let's figure out how to grid. If you guys haven't done a grid, this is a really good skill. You know, I did it all acrylic April. You know, I've done it, shown it before. But I think for the rest of the BAQ, we're going to use a grid because it's going to really help us develop those skills for getting images on the canvas. But again, use, use the traceable. Nothing wrong with it. To do the grid, though, I need to make sure my surface is fairly dry. And I'm going to dry that. And then I'm going to take my T-square and a chalk pencil and make the lines that match my reference. Hmm. That's what she's going to do. So I just, uh, this is, this. it's really exciting to be back, to be doing the big art quest with you guys. It's lovely to see everyone here, all of my friends, everyone. So thank you guys. This is a much more, uh, this is a wonderful chance for us to have a chance, chance at, I'm going to turn my mic down. I've got it in my head echoing. Much better chance for us as a community to see each other on a regular basis and talk about the, the things that you're needing to know along your journey. So please jump in here, ask me questions. I'm going to do my best to sort of get them in for Cinnamon as we can. Um, really appreciate you coming. Don't forget, low heat on your hair dryers. Mm -hmm. All that kind of stuff. You'll I'm hear so me glad to have the Talk Talk camera back. For all the people who were so disappointed in all the chatting. <laughs> Camera's back. <laughs> okay, what is BAQ? It is the big art oh. quest. It began in 2016 where I just wanted to talk about things you might not know about art. If you were a new artist, like stuff that was in the art store or techniques or concepts or terms you didn't know. And we'd look at it for about an hour, whatever the topic was. And we had weird topics and we had really sensible topics. Like we had lava topic. <laughs> we had a how to paint underwater that everybody thought was me painting underwater in scuba gear instead of the principles of painting underwater. I, um, I was voting for the you underwater painting too, just yes. to say, I was like, I wanted to get that shot. How to paint rocks, how to paint fur, how to paint clouds, you know, different techniques, a little bit about perspective, just, just so that you guys, a little bit about mediums, a little bit about, you know, what's a medium versus, you know, what's an additive, those kinds of things so that you guys would have an easier time. It was sort of a free form consciousness thing. You'd make a binder and stick all your projects in it, and you'd have, like, this the sense of things. And then the next year, we did faces. So we did a whole year of doing faces. And then we were doing, uh, in 2018, the Big Art Quest Fairy Tale, but in the middle of the year, my life just went crazy. And um, a lot of things went wrong, and we had a lot of bad help, and a lot of crazy stuff happened, and it just threw me off. Um, and so we got behind, and then somebody pointed out, oh, my gosh, it's been, like, a year, and I had barely finished um, the Selkie. And I was like, oh, my, we have to get back to this. The Sherpa keeps her promises. We are questing. So if you guys are falling into this right now, there's six other ones waiting for you to do that are all awesome, awesome, awesome. You just search the Big Art Quest Fairy Tale and it'll pull up a bunch of playlists. It's awesome. To do a grid, I'm going to come across here and I'm going to mark every inch. Now, I'm going to try my chalk pencil here. If it works, I'm going to go with it. If it doesn't, I'll change to a different type. Acrylic paint is pretty temperamental, and sometimes it'll take something, and then sometimes it won't. So what I've found with this that I've got to do is I have to mark one way and then mark the other because I um, my T-square is shorter <laughs> than my surface. I have a T-square that's this long, but it's not fun to use on the canvas, on the, on the easel, because it's ginormous. If you're new here, that was one of Cinnamon's uh, perfect segues from... We're going to chat to we're going to work, and we're just going to go. Oh, yeah, I do that. I'm like, chat, 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 chat. Go, go, go. And then people are like, I was fast forwarding, and I missed half the lesson. I'm like, see, you have to listen to the chat. Because <laughs> you never know what I'm going to do. You don't like my chatting. I might teach in the middle of chatting. <laughs> Sorry. You're that professor. <laughs> I, I am. <laughs> you know. I'm just right? like, well, I'm so sorry that didn't work for you. That probably really sucked. <laughs> you should show up to how, class. <laughs> how come your family vacation notes are on the final exam? <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> you know what? It is what it is. It's free art education. What do you want? <laughs> So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit this line. So you can see what we're basically doing is we're 
going along every inch or so and marking the surface. And I'm just going to make sure I've got all these. It's kind of a time consuming uh, task. To just grid it. To grid it. And I could do these pre-gridded, but what I found is with students, especially if they're new students, seeing me go through in real time can be helpful because they can fast forward or rewind or rewatch a segment that where maybe they're struggling. Grid with us. Grid with us. It's a therapeutic to grid. You know, Flynn was all about the grid. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get sucked in though today. I'm not. No Tron references today? None. Okay. None. No, you can always try and reference Tron. There's never going to be a time you can't reference Tron. Isn't that like in our marriage vows? I don't, I think maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so once you do the one inch across, then you've got to come and do the same for your horizontal. And so I just come along and again, mark every inch or so. You can imagine that I'm going to run out of room right about here. Because I got two extra inches. I just flip the ruler and mark the inch on the way back. See? Things that you might not know that you would want to know. So I just have to measure it from that side. But once you have it, you have it. And what's nice about this is this is long enough, and that's great. So the rest of this gridding is super easy. Oh, gridding, gridding, gridding. And you can see sometimes it doesn't want to uh, make a mark. And that's about the paint and the pencil and all kinds of things. And I, I may have to paint. Be, uh, some of this again because my pencil is so rough and I don't see where my chalk went. Yeah. I put some out, but it got, it's moved. I don't know where it went. Okay. So a lot of times when we're setting up, uh, you know, we clean up and, and help out and help each other. And then that means everybody's there's, stuff while, gets moved. While you're gridding, there's an interesting question. Yes. Cause there's nothing interesting about the gridding. So let's, let's ask interesting questions. So, uh, I got so a boo boo there. I don't mind if you put your questions in ca in all caps. It's yeah. a way that I can see them. I it's don't not it, yelling it's on not a, yelling. on a YouTube chat. It's just uh, it's just raising your hand. Yeah, putting your question in all caps is not yelling. It's like raising your hand. Yeah, no, you know, probably don't. unless you post it again and again and again yeah, and again yeah. and again, and then you're like that kid. Wait, wait. Then you're like that kid. <laughs> 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 but we, but 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 we you can trying. be that kid in our group. We it's don't okay. mind. We we yeah we don't. <laughs> I'm just saying you know we it. And we know it, and everybody know it. We have we have chairs in the front row waiting for you. Yes, chairs <laughs> in the front row. Wave okay. your question as much as you need to. But to the question that actually to the question. To the, it was okay. it was. Let me go back and find it now because it was actually a good question. Where oh there it is. If you still have blotchy white whiteness peeking through uh is the paint you're is it the paint you're using or is it not blending enough vanessa would like to so know. if your canvas is still showing through um there's a couple things that can be playing oh. havoc with your life one is a lot of these surfaces are not prepared correctly there isn't an oversight committee there is not an art standard unless a company volunteers to subject itself to the astmd standards which Obviously, bunches of them don't. What you hear me doing over here is I'm scraping my little pencil on my rough easel to chalk it up. Because sometimes it's not chalky enough. It's not chalky enough. It's not chalky enough. I have to chalk it up. Um, so that can be happening. And the trick for that, if, if, the, if it's like painting on the surface of plastic and your paint just isn't going on there, you can um, kind of like mist it or rinse it off and make sure you dry flat because these can bend. Uh, another thing that you have going on is that um, uh, you might have too much water in your brush and that will let a lot of it go through. And, and then the other last one is you could be dry brushing. So it's interesting. You can get similar effects from different problems, which is, I think, what makes art so challenging. It's just not a one-size-fits-all set of things going on. All right, no. let's see, I've got that. I got to get that grid pretty. This part of the grid, because we do a lot of her up here, so I just want to make sure this part of the grid is really good. Are you going to be doing any tracing? No. Uh, no, not? all gridding today. All gridding. All, so they can trace, but I'm doing all gridding today. Well, Andre was asking, and uh, I can't remember the name of the stuff either. Uh, she was. She bought the tracing paper. That Sterile had, paper? Yep, that's the stuff. And she couldn't, she, she, she couldn't remember... 
the proper way to, to use it because if you put it wrong way down it cannot work right how do you is there a good way to remember which side is well the good on side? the yellow it's the brighter side of yellow yeah on the white touch it with your fingers one side will leave a, a dust mark on it and one side won't okay so the dust side goes down the dust side goes down and okay. make sure read your box make sure you didn't get the quilting one because the quilting one is not for art it you has, want the one for fine art that they label for fine art. And that's because the fine art one is made of a chalky substance that, that removes stain. with water. So yeah. it's a little bit easier. All right. So here we go. We've got that. Now I've got, I'm going to have John get me a sharpener. Just, do you not have a sharpener there? I don't, but there's one in that little bowl over there. So yep. we're going to get one. Okay. okay I'll get that. So basically you print out your reference here, your grid reference. And what you're going to do is you're going to find your square and only draw what you see perfect in that square. Only that. Nothing else. Oh, I like I like the bear one. And this is my crayon one, so it gets killed. The crayon one must only be for crayons. So if you look here, you go shit down one, two, three, four, five squares and over one. So one, two, three, four, five squares and over one. That's where part of her chin and neck is. Right? And it comes here. Comes back towards this corner. And her neck bends across. And you can just find the line that it is. And it only goes in a little bit because she's got a shoulder right here. You can easily see by looking at the squares how big is that shoulder. It's really fascinating how you can use this to freehand something in. Right? Now at the shoulder, which is coming right here, we also have the beginning of her chest, which comes right there. And then across here, we're going to come down. There we go across now i'm at her little belly which goes across this grid so you can see that here so see right here it goes down a little bit and across that's all you've got to draw that's all you're drawing okay you're not drawing everything you see in the rendering you're just drawing the little bit that's in your square keep your mind centered to just your square if you're in your square you'll be fine if you get global you may not be fine and you can always come in and, and adjust lines and play with the paint. You're going to have to anyways, because when we're painting, you know, even when you trace on, you lose a lot of what you referenced on, don't you? Mm. So, so if I want to see the bell curve, I can see that it comes through here. There's a sliver going through here and the rest goes through there. But then it comes across here pretty solidly, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So that's all I'm doing. But the next one, it's just a little corner, just a little corner. And then past the corner. It starts to come down that way. Okay. So So this I, is what we're doing. Now I know that a lot of folks are commenting the end that gridding can be challenging. Gridding can be challenging. And here's the here's the trick. Don't try to attack the entire grid at once. Mm mm. It's, Don't do it. Because then it can become overwhelming and it's the same dauntingness as trying to draw something without having... Be in your square. Yeah. If I'm in this square, I am this line only right here. Not all this other information, just this line. I come out a little bit and I look at where, where does it end in this square? Middle of my square, beginning of my square. Now, so all I've got to do is come here and go, oh, it starts at the beginning of my square and ends at the middle of my square and has a little bit of a bend in there. So I just duplicate that square. Now, Cinnamon's cruising through these squares a lot faster because she's a lot of experience drawing. Now, that doesn't mean that you're expected to cruise through those at those speeds. No, you grade at your own speed. And you're going to take time. Sometimes it may take you five minutes to construct one little grid space because and it's a complex one. That's okay. And that's why you can hit pause. And that's why we go about 45 minutes to an hour on these um, lessons because we do kind of cover some of these concepts, which can be, you know, a little more overwhelming. So I'm going to bring this arm down. Comes through here. That's where her elbow is. 
of the elbow. And cross here. And there's the wrist. Spreading back up. Just using one line in, one line out. One line in, one line out. And I will often make little adjustments if I feel something is off in the grid to the drawing, to the overall balance of the drawing. And again, the reason I keep the traceables, even though I'm showing demoing a grid, is because you guys might really, that comes down here more than I thought. It's just important to see where you're at. There we go. And if I need to erase, I can just get a little clean water. Oh, look, and you just erase, so it's not a big deal. I'm going to actually come back up here and grid the bell. Yeah, the nice thing about having those traceables is that if you do want to throw that up there to have a little guide, it there's just nothing wrong with it. So uh -oh. you can use these in combination. Like if you're wanting to develop your skills, but you're unco you're not confident then you can try to grid it in, throw the traceable over the top of it, correct anything that, that you, you want. you think is wrong. Yeah. And, you know, so it's okay to use a combination of these things. I mean, there are some really, really famous, famous um, physique artists that used projection and uh, image. Like, they use tracing. They use all sorts of, of things so that they can get those perfect phys physiologies. They do. And that's okay. That's okay. You know, you're not going to be sorry that you did it. Just being able to throw down a... Yeah, a little bit of knowledge there. Well, I was just thinking, no, you should be able just to, to, to just draw raw. Like, you're just, psh, I'm going to put some hair in. Like, so... Well, I know where it is, and I can see from the grid. I'm just, I'm again, I'm just blocking, and, like, I know she's I, got an arm here. I'm still always, like, I don't see things that way. I'm always impressed up. that you can just see the space that's going to be filled with the image ahead of time. It helps. Although I have been seeing more clouds lately. You have. You're, you've are you been like, what color would we paint that cloud? So I know I'm going to be painting the hand in and out. Because I when you get into the paint, it really changes the adjustment on your hand. I don't know if y'all have noticed that. But it can really change the aspect of what's going on in your hand. So you just got to be kind of like aware. There we go. Getting that in. And I'll work out her hand on a later date. Now, her the light, the only thing I'm going to remind myself is that we're coming up here. And then it's going to come oh, here. Button. This button. There we go. So that's letting me know how I'm going to do the bell curve. And while I've got these colors out, I do want to get my bell out. And so I'm going to take my uh, Scotty knife again, as you do. I'm going to sip my coffee too. Oh, are you? I'm going to get my Scotty knife again, and I'm going to mix my green and my blue, making my phthalo turquoise. You can buy this color pre-made. Um, I think Holbein has my favorite version of it. The phthalo turquoise is really good. They call it marine I'm, blue, I'm, I think. Ooh, look how you made a thorough mix. You didn't. Yeah, didn't, it's thoroughly mixed. You left nothing there on the table. Nothing. Was, nothing. Dropping. What did I drop? I scooted over stuff. whatever it was. Probably ruler. I, I like I like the zoomy camera over here. You see do ya? Because I can go. Do ya now? Oh, 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 you're putting your arms on the way I can. Do, do, do. Okay. <laughs> so hopefully you've printed out your grid. And you're going to want to look at both the photo reference and the painting reference to kind of get a sense of how we're going to paint this. I'm going to also put out just a smidge more of my, where did it go, my phthalo blue? It's got to be over here. There it is. Put out a smidge more of my phthalo blue because I, I might be darkening with that. We're gonna, ooh. There we go. So let's get into like, um, I'm thinking I'm going to do a number six Cambridge 
This is a mix of synthetic and natural bristles, and that keeps it from being too soggy. It's a bright, it's a good little brush. And I'm going to start thinking about coming in and talking about these darker values that I'm going to have. Look at that. Yep. Just roughly laying that in. There's a curve to the brush stroke. We're curving the brush stroke. I might dip in the water. If the flow off my brush isn't lovely, because you want it to be lovely. Let me get you. I'm going to bring a little bit here. There we go. Because again, we're just starting to lay in those water effects, right? And we're going to paint out a lot of our grid again one more time, which is going to give us some really beautiful water depth. And we'll have our mermaid in. How awesome are we? I'm just coming here and look at that. Just painting that in. Layer, layer, layer. What's wonderful about that color is it's very, very, very transparent. So it almost glazes when I'm putting it on. You can just sort of see me loosely and roughly working it back and forth. Notice the action in my brush. So when you see, um, this kind of effect where I have a thin transparent glaze of pigment and I'm just roughly kind of rubbing it back and forth, which is dusting the canvas. That's often called blushing or rouging your canvas. Mm. Glazing, um, I would actually be adding a glazing medium for. It's just a fun fact you might not know. I did not know this was rouging. You are rouging. You're rouging it up. I'm going to add some white and I'm going to come back. Through this, I'm going to dip in water. I want some nice flow. And again, it's about these layers as we work the water ripples. We're just building up some values, right? Coming back and forth. We've gridded. We've done a gradation. We've freehanded our girl in through the gridding method, which is awesome. If you use the traceable method, that's okay. The issue for you as an artist is to make a decision about how are you going to put this object on the surface. That's what you're doing. Whether you know it or not. <laughs> mm. You're doing that. I'm going to come here and add a little more white. But I have, let me get some more of this in here. So I've got the white on my brush. I'm also kind of showing there, there's this little effect is bowing. More white. Back, come around her, blending it back in. See how we're doing? Yeah. Now, I'm going to, because I don't need the grid for any other part of this to create it, I'm going to get my clean water. And this is a soft brush. Uh, this is a fantastic brush to blend with. I use it in place of a mop. And the reason is, is that a mop has goat hair and can get quite wet and it ends up just sopping my canvas if I'm not really, really proficient at it. This is a little more forgiving and more resilient against the acrylic. Just fun fact, I got asked that a bunch. So the first thing is to see if I can get it up with water. Because I was pressing fairly hard to get it in. I get up like everything up. I can get up with water if it's going to lighten with water. But I'm not too worried because I'm going to come back in with paint and I'm going to, I'm not going to take her out. I need her left in, but I'm going to improve the gradation. So let's start again with a little of our aqua. Painting that aqua, right? There we go. It's nice to have a little blue and a little purple at the bottom. The depths of the sea. And you can see the grid does disappear. And that's really just about how hard I was pressing today. When I was making my grid, it probably would have been better to use chalk on this one. So in my mind, I'm going to be like, oh, when I'm using the acrylic acrylics, I will probably not use the general charcoal white pencil. I'll probably use kids chalk which is intrinsically softer. 
Now what you saw me doing is kind of wiping off my brush and I'm coming back and I'm cleaning. Can you see how I'm giving a nice blend there? As I come up, I'm going to keep adding some white. Too much white. There we go. To the mix. I'm not going to take away my grid. Ooh, Jill asked a really interesting question. Hi, Jill. See how we're going right there? I'm not taking away my grid. I'm just blending that gradation back in. So she wanted to know, uh, do just cheap brushes shed? Uh, no, some pricey brushes shed. Uh, a good brush is, is about engineering. Is the brush well engineered? There are some inexpensive brushes that are quite well engineered, and then there are some pricey brushes that are not well engineered. So cost is not necessarily guarantee, but a well-made brush, a well-engineered brush, should not shed after the initial wash. You will get more shedding off of hog hair bristles like this. This is just solid hog. It's best dressed. It's got a flagged end. It's very high-end brush. Um, it's one of my favorite, and I've had it forever. It's not shed for me, but maybe twice in a multitude of years because I did the initial wash, got the few loose hairs out, and have used it since. But I've had other brushes that were like, you would think they were losing their summer coat. Now I'm going to take that blending brush I mentioned earlier, and I'm going to just make sure that that's softly transitioned. Can you see how that's softly transitioned as I paint down? Because you can just take that, see, and just blend. Like blend, 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 blend. Look at that soft transition. It's like a magic blender. It really is. You know. So it confuses people because it says ultimate varnish. So they're like, I'm not varnishing, but dude, it's like, no, but you want to definitely blend with it if you can. So if you've got a sheddy brush. A sheddy brush. Take it to the take it to the hair wash. Take it to the sink and wash it vigorously. Right? Definitely take it to the sink. Wash it vigorously. Do not um put it to your canvas before you've had a chance to wash it out i'm going to put out a little bit of my cad yellow little of my cad yellow gonna get some really deep green aqua colors here in a second i'm still just enjoying my my mixes all right little phthalo blue little phthalo green there we go we can kind of see that color right there let's keep working that make that water just beautiful. One like that. See? Get a little bit of white into there. It's fun for me. Brushing there. I'm just creating those light effects as they happen leaving my sketch in of her everywhere that I can. And with a soft brush, blending it softly. I'll just take this up a little bit. And as I'm coming up, you can see that's just like an oil painting. It's a super soft transition. Not hard to do at all. Oh, that was cool. You could see it right there on that little edge over mm -hmm. there to the right. Yeah, right where you just did that. You could totally see it there. Yeah, super doable. Right tool, right stuff, right products really help you not have a problem. The right stuff. And this doesn't stop working because I got it wet. I can pull enough water out of it with just my towel that it still looks like I got that drop there. So I got to blend that drop. So it's still a soft blender. You dripped, you dropped. Yeah. And it just blended right out. It does. So I really like it. Um, this is a pretty, uh, look, I think this is worth an investment. I have a grip of them. I will continue to buy my whole life. I, I do think this reminds me a lot of a good makeup brush by like uh, Too Faced. Mm. So just a thought <laughs> in case you're like, I don't know about any of that. And we've got that in. Let's start putting in some of the water up here. Let's keep talking about that a little bit. I like to get sometimes a little of my yellow into my turquoise, as you can see there, a little bit of white. And that starts to green it up. Because you want to green it up sometimes just a little bit. See how we're doing? That's sort of the green, warm water that you can get. It can be happening. 
I bring some of this here, some of these values and tones, and I'm going to really enjoy blending this in here right up to her. Get right into your dark phthalo blue, phthalo green mix. You're going to just make sure that you're coming right here. See how we're doing? On the toe of my brush, I'm working it back and forth. If I need to get some just phthalo on there, I can. And you can see that's an extra kind of level of deep, isn't it? If I need it to flow better and softer off the brush, I can come like this. And if I wanted these to be super softly transitioned between each other, I would use my blending brush. But with water, you have a lot of these little dark and weird light spots that you've got to deal with. So now I'm going to wiggle in some of these. Yeah, these are like watery patterns in the dark. I'm getting a little more phthalo blue into that turquoise mix. And I'm just making some of these more wiggle water patterns. Water ripples. And you'd want to see that ripplage. And you'll see it through the dark values and the light values. So it's important to get both. Too many buttons today. <laughs> Too many buttons today. And so here, guys, so what we have is we're going to get through these reflections. And then we'll stop, and then you guys work on that, and I'll post the next uh, um, live up, and then we'll meet back up and do part two. Oh, yeah, we're just now at about 42 minutes. Yeah. We're going to just gonna get this in. You know, it, we, and again, we like to keep this short so you guys aren't fatigued, because some of these are some big concepts. And we don't want you guys to get so tired, you're not doing the pieces. Sometimes it's nice to meet for a second, pulling that dark value down. You can kind of see that. A little green, a little blue, kind of working it through there. Very nice. Now I may come here and I've got my turquoise, right? My phthalo turquoise mixed right there. And I might get a little of my white into that and make sure that this is sort of well thought out and blended. A little more white on there. And pull that back. There we go. Just getting that soft transition from the top to the bottom. Now we get to have some fun. So you're going to take out a little of your white and go ahead and get some of your turquoise into your brush. And you're going to make a pretty light color. I might even add a little yellow into it so it's just that warm. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Get right on into it. Zoom on into that on. color. Like let them get right on in it so they can really. Can you guys really see that color? That's where we're at. You can kind of yep. compare it to what we had earlier, and now we're here. You can come to the surface. And let's start winding in some of these little highlights. See these? We're going to wind in some of these little. Highlights are not the lightest highlights that we have, but they're beginning to think about them. And you definitely, definitely want to be thinking about how am I going to show the ripple, the effect, you know, into the water. I love that we can zoom in. Do you guys like that? I like it. I'm having fun. I don't mean to boss my husband around on the zoomy camera. 
<laughs> I, it's good to know when I can because sometimes I, you know, I don't want to be distracting with it. Right, right. No, and I get that. So we're going to come here with this sort of lighter color and we're going to maybe talk even about where we know we're going to have the bell. Here we go. Maybe some little lightness here. You can see I've got dark colors, I've got my light colors, I'm just starting to get those different little reflections that could be going on. Oh, let me go over here. What are you doing? I'm get my mix again. I'm gonna you can zoom in on onto this one. You can see wondering. this is sort of the turquoise again. It's a little bit light. I might add a little white to it so we can really see its turquoiseness. And I'm gonna make sure that some of my darker reflections have a bit of that aquatic smoothness to them. I'm over here. That's what I'm doing. I'm playing with the water. I'm making highlights and shadows. We're going to play with highlights and shadows. Maybe there's a nice little highlight shadow. As you do. You get that going. And then I'm going to get just my white going. I'm going to load up my white. It's okay if my brush is a little, is a little bit kind of, kind of messy. And I'm just pushing it along and I'm making these very, look at these, look at the shape. It goes back. You can see the brush motion. Really, let's look at my brush motion. I'm pushing back, but then I might zig back. You can see that parts of the brush like pull behind the roughness of it leaves these very water-like marks. I'm going to get a bunch of paint loaded on that edge of my brush. There we go. Right there. there we go. Getting some water on there. Going to load up the tip. I think we need a nice white area right here it's very highlighted and we're catching those little white highlights no marks there If I need to, I'll look back up to the tip of my brush. Soft pressure. I'm not pressing very hard. And I'm letting little bits of the water catch. There we go. Lots of it lighter down here by where she is. I'm still into my white. Coming around where I know her bust is going to be flush with the water. Here we are. We're just making those, making those little. And we're probably going to have to come back in with some dark values. To help these white values pop. And rinsed out just in case the paint was getting dry on my brush. Now I'm going to switch brushes real fast and I'm going to get into a bright, I'm going to get into um, Maybe a uh, ruby satin bright number four. You could probably also do an arch sherpa number four round. Add a little more white here. And I'm going to come in and get some dark colors. So the dark color is going to be a little bit of my turquoise. We'll start with that. And let's come in and make sure that between these elements, there's a shadow. Can you see how we're doing? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, today we're just gonna be getting just a bit of this water in. Yeah, we're just gonna get a little water in. And we're gonna break this up into sections so you guys don't get overwhelmed. You can take this a piece at a time. Totally conquer this painting. Yeah. The quest is about breaking things down into their their little digestible bits. That's what we do. Break it down. There you go. Some of that. It's always nice to get a little a little thoughtful kind of so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll come along where I have a white highlight and add a bit of a shadow and that helps pull it into its little water space. I'm going to rinse out very completely. I'm going to get a little more white on my brush, this one here. And I'm going to come along and let's make some little, little soft. These are little, little, little less marks. They're a little going and just thinking about where the water's at on her. You shape the water. Just think about it and shape it. I'm getting a little bit of light color again. It's quite yellow green. Now you have a uh you have a couple videos about varnishing, don't you? I do have a few videos about varnishing, but if I can, here's what I'll honestly say. Varnish for a reason, not just because. Like, if you are in an area where your paintings get damaged or touched or messed with a lot, good reason to varnish. If your painting is a lot of different finishes, that's a very good reason to varnish. If um, uh you are trying to protect it from the elements that's a good reason to varnish but there isn't actually like a requirement in any way that you varnish um acrylic paint it's actually pretty stout stuff yeah so i i often varnish because either there's a lot of different finishes to my painting or sometimes i will varnish because um, my kids touch things. They touch a lot of things. Mm. They touch everything. So I have a damage problem. <laughs> definitely, definitely have a damage problem. So just playing with that, right? We just play with those lights and shadows. And I think I'm going to grab just a little bit on the corner of my brush, kind of like a little dot dab, and I'm going to. Maybe make some sparkly little highlights. Hmm. It's just on the corner, and that'll be the last little touchy touch that I do. My coffee needs some reheating anyway. My coffee needs some reheating anyways. <laughs> um, tonight, if you're in the Facebook group, I'm going to do a live uh, news and update stream from the Archer official Facebook group, not the page, just the group. It's just an in-group thing. And I'll let you guys know what's happening, what you should know about, or what you might want to know about. You don't have to. That's looking pretty nice. There we go. And then when she gets in the water, it's literally her, right? Her against, as you can see, like she's right here. And then her body comes up there. So it's her against that surface that also helps enforce that this is reflective, that uh, stuff is shining down, um, that things are happening. So that's how we're getting that done. I think this is a good stopping place. And then we'll meet back up um, probably next week. I'll put her up probably next Thursday. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll confirm that on my calendar, but that's that's when we like to do our big art quest is Thursdays at 11. Sometimes I'm lazy and I put them at 12, but most of I try to do them at 11. Um, be sure and come by the group if you're in there. Um, I'm going to be showing you a bunch of stuff. I just really want to thank everybody so much for the support. If you haven't checked your subscription status in a while, be sure that you've checked it, that you've rung the bell and you've turned notifications on. Otherwise, you won't know when we're live. And it's so awesome to know when we're live. Unless you don't want to know when we're live and then definitely don't do any of that because that will tell you that we're live. Or you can sign up for our text notification. Either is really good. You can text the Art Sherpa to 33222 if you're in the U.S. That sounds correct. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.